This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. When Mike Tyson first exploded onto the scene en route to becoming the youngest heavyweight champion in history, the division was catapulted into a 15-year stretch where boxing's marquee weight class was exciting and competitive and had a great abundance of talent. In addition to the powerhouse that was Mike Tyson, we also saw some outstanding undisputed world champions in Evander Holyfield, Riddick Bowe, and Lennox Lewis. And we also had George Foreman regaining the title to become the oldest heavyweight champion in history, this less than 10 years after Tyson had become the youngest. When Lennox Lewis retired, it marked the end of an era. Over the next 10 plus years, the division was dominated by the Klitschko brothers. At first, Vitaly was viewed as the top dog in the air to Lennox, then he retired due to injuries, and Vladimir bounced back after joining forces with Emmanuel Stewart, and Vladimir became the dominant heavyweight force. Then Vitaly came back, and both Klitschkos ruled over the division for several years, before Vitaly retired again for good, as Vlad's reign continued to march along. The main problems for fans when the Klitschko brothers reigned supreme was number one, the Klitschko brothers were head and shoulders above the rest of the competition, so their fights tended to be one-sided. And number two, since the Klitschkos were both clearly the top two heavyweights, the fact that they were brothers and understandably would never face one another, this prevented fans from ever seeing a matchup between the two best heavyweights of that era. Things suddenly became a bit more interesting when Vladimir's dominant run came to an unexpected end at the hands of Tyson Fury. But that was two long years ago now, and Fury hasn't fought since. Meanwhile, two heavyweight champions have risen towards the top of the mountain, Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. Both men hold portions of the heavyweight crown, both boxers are undefeated, and they are both in their respective physical primes. Despite all of this, they are still both also very much works in progress. Just a few weeks ago, Wilder made the sixth successful defense of the WBC title against the man he beat to become champion, Herman Stavern. Wilder scored an impressive first round knockout, dropping Stavern three times. So that's six title defenses for Wilder in less than three years, but it wasn't necessarily against the greatest competition for a world champion. Although in fairness, it's not Wilder's fault that bouts with Povietkin and Ortiz fell through. The week before Wilder blasted Stavern out of there, Joshua took care of business scoring a 10th round stoppage against Carlos to calm. So Joshua successfully defended the unified WBA and IBF titles, and this was his fourth title defense in about a year and a half since he won the IBF belt from Charles Martin. He would later add the vacant WBA strap when he defeated Vladimir earlier this year. As far as a matchup between Joshua and Wilder, I believe Deontay is definitely the more explosive puncher and he might also have the edge in athleticism and overall power. Wilder has a pretty good jab, he's capable of throwing nice straight punches, and he appears to have good fighting instincts. But Wilder does have a tendency to get a little wild sometimes, and Wilder hasn't faced particularly good competition to date, despite racking up six title defenses. While I believe Wilder is the more explosive of the two, I definitely think that Joshua is the more polished of the two. To me, Joshua just seems like a more well-rounded boxer. I think Joshua is more skilled, he definitely has better technique, and it seems to me that he has a much better understanding of range and balance. Joshua has also faced the better competition, and he made a huge statement and overcame adversity in a career-defining victory against Vladimir Klitschko. But all the same, Joshua still has some flaws of his own, 
And many of the things that Joshua has seen susceptible towards are the types of things that Wilder happens to do extremely well. So a matchup between Joshua and Wilder is a very intriguing prospect. Right now, I tend to favor Joshua, as I think he's the better skilled and more proven commodity. I ultimately think Joshua's better sense of range and distance will provide him with a strategic advantage that affords him more ways of winning. But that doesn't mean it would be easy, and you can never ever count someone like Wilder out. He has the power and the means to deliver it. He's always a threat, and the fact that he has a decent jab makes him all the more dangerous because it allows him to disguise his right hand. So I think sooner or later, this showdown is inevitable, and I think this is great for boxing. We have two undefeated champions in their prime, and we have the chances for a showcase unification battle. This is something we really didn't have during the Klitschko era. I'm not faulting the Klitschkos here, but Joshua Wilder would be great for boxing, and it symbolizes the type of thing that we really haven't seen since Lennox retired. Making matters even more interesting is the Tyson Fury factor. Fury hasn't fought since his upset victory against Vladimir nearly two years ago. But potentially, I think that version of Fury might be able to beat both Joshua and Wilder. We may never see that version of Fury again. He never sees the moment his victory over Klitschko afforded him. Instead, he had a long stretch of inactivity where he got out of shape and fell off the radar. But the manner in which Fury beat Klitschko was more impressive than the way Joshua beat him. That's not to take anything away from Anthony Joshua. He showed a lot of skills, a lot of heart, and he had to dig down deep and overcome adversity to earn his victory against Vladimir. But the fact remains, Klitschko was in that fight, and this helped make for a much more exciting and dramatic encounter. That fight was up in the air going into round 11, and Joshua rose to the occasion with a career-defining victory against an all-time great. Fury, on the other hand, he simply outclassed Klitschko. Vladimir is a very skilled and disciplined technician. He's methodical and efficient in his execution. But Fury had Vladimir so befuddled and so confused with his movement that Vladimir didn't know whether he was coming or going, and Vlad was unable to ever set himself up to open fire on the ever-moving target. It was a masterful display of dictating the range and the fighting distance the likes of which we've never seen from Joshua or Wilder. It may not have been the most entertaining effort, but Fury was effective and impressive all the same. Fury keeps threatening to come back. If he does come back in 2018 and regains form that's something close to what he had that night, I think he could probably beat Wilder and Joshua. And even though I personally favored Joshua over Wilder, I actually think Wilder poses a bigger threat to Fury because Wilder is less methodical and more impulsive than Joshua. And against a skilled slickster like Fury, I happen to think Wilder's strengths match up better against Fury's unorthodox movement. So with Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, and Tyson Fury, we have a heavyweight landscape that has a lot of interesting prospects on the horizon. I'm not saying that this trio represents the modern-day Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield, and Lennox Lewis of this era. None of them are proven enough on that front. But all the same, we have three undefeated boxers, all of them fairly young, all of them with various claims to being the best heavyweight in the world, and all of them possibly on a collision course for heavyweight supremacy. I, for one, am pretty excited to see how the heavyweight championship picture plays out. Because the pieces are all in place where things can get real exciting in the not-so-distant future. That's all I got for now. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great night, everyone.